So, how many of you know about the NoSQL? Okay, and how many of you have attended the yesterday training? Great. Okay, so one, <laughs> not much. So, <clears throat> so agenda of this particular uh, session is, I'll be giving a little bit int introduction of the JSON, H store, and PLV8, a kind of a programming language supported into the uh, PostgreSQL. Um, some little bit history of the JSON in Postgres. Uh, JSON data types and operating functions, which is available in Postgres SQL 9.3. Uh, with that, um, what's coming in the 9.4? Um, they will be then, of course, I'll be, I'll be also talking about the which one you would like to use when. Like JSON and JSONB, these are two different data types, which is in Postgres SQL. Um, then there will be a simple example how you can use. Node.js technology with PostgreSQL when Postgres is returning a JSON document in your application. And there are some benchmarking which we had done with the NoSQL, especially with the MongoDB 2.6 and PostgreSQL 9.4. And then after that, there will be some resources, you know, which you can look at it to get more information. So, if you have attended yesterday training, there will be some kind of overlap between uh, today's talk and yesterday training. Uh, so, when we talk about the NoSQL, there are some important questions come in the mind, right? Uh, where did NoSQL come from? Um, why did they make a NoSQL thing? Why does, no, what does actually NoSQL accomplish uh, for the users? And why did they have to build something new if the RDBMS or other database technology which was there? Uh, so, NoSQL actually came from the companies, inter internet-based companies which has the huge amount of big volume of a data, which they wanted to ingest into a database, and they were looking for the good performance, right? And they want to retrieve that data very fast. Uh, so that was mainly based on the three Vs. That is velocity, volume, and variety. Because the data is coming from the internet, they were a different variety of a data. It was not properly structured. So these are the some uh, four real world application this I took from the Gartner's report, which was published in February 28, 2014. Uh, it was under the heading of a tour of NoSQL uh, use cases. One is for the emergency management system. Uh, emergency management system, because they were looking, they ha it has the high variety of a data. That is, there were a lot of different uh, videos streaming over the internet. They were collecting huge amount of a data about the persons. So those information, and the, it has a lot of varieties. And the volume was very high, so that's why they went with the NoSQL technology. In the same way, there was a massive open <coughs> online course. Uh, this online course contained different variety of the online courses which is available, and the sources were different. So the structure was not known uh, to this particular application. So that's why they went with the NoSQL, and of course, they were looking for some kind of a read scalability. So they preferred the NoSQL technology for the massive open online courses. Same way for the social marketing analytics. So in social marketing, marketing analytics, uh, they were going through the internet, finding out the uh, different way of you know, promoting a particular link or web pages, looking for the special keywords. So uh, for those kind of a thing, for analyzing that huge amount of a volume, they prefer the NoSQL technology. But PostgreSQL already has this kind of a capabilities. So over the year, Postgres has given up uh, the proper response to this NoSQL technology. Uh, there are important data types which is inbuilt into the PostgreSQL. One is the edge store, which is there since version 8.2. Uh, of course, when we talk about NoSQL structure, people generally keep the data in the key value pair. So edge store provide that kind of a storage system in the PostgreSQL where you can keep the key value data, a kind of unstructured data. And this is actually good for the uh, flat data structure where you have you don't have the nested uh, key value pairs inside the one key value. Uh, second, uh, in 9.2, PostgreSQL came up with the JSON data type. The JSON is actually a kind of a hierarchical document model. Um, it was introduced in 9.2, and in 9.3, and in the, even in the coming version of the 9.4, it's there are a lot of new APIs and functions operators coming with uh, for the JSON, so that user can easily use that unstructured data properly. 
A 9.4 is also coming with a JSON B, which is kind of a binary representation of a JSON, a canonical form of the JSON document. Uh, it's much more faster than the uh, JSON because it's a pre-passed data stored into the database. Uh, it will be part of the 9.4. So let's talk about the uh, key value store. Uh, that is the H store. H store is a kind of a contrib module in PostgreSQL. It is supported since 2006. Um, <clears throat> And of course, since it is part of the PostgreSQL, Postgres, as we know that PostgreSQL is a RDBMS, which is ACID compliant, so you don't lose the ACID property of a database. Um, it, uh, to use the H store, you can create a one column with the H store data type, and you can store your rows as a key value pair. So you can add all those things into it. So H store is giving a kind of a flexibility. Flexibility in the sense, if you look at the H store data structure, it's a key value. You can have multiple uh, attributes for a particular property, or you can say multiple properties of a particular entity with, in the form of key and value. You can store that in the in the H store. This is a one very simple example you can see here, uh, in which uh, of course uh, this slide doesn't talk about how you can install the H store. It's a kind of an extension or country module in PostgreSQL. To install the edge store, you have to just execute a very simple command called create extension edge store. That's it. And then after that, you can use the edge store data type. So you, here you can see in this example, there is one edge store table using the create table command. Uh, it has been created. It has a one particular column called data, which data type is edge store. And the, of course, uh, putting a data into the edge store is very simple. You can use a simple insert command, which is SQL and C. And the value you can see here is a cost, product, and provider. So here you, it's, it's a kind of a key and value. Cost is a key, and the value of the cost is 500. So the uh, the store is giving kind of a semi-structured data you can store into the database in H2 form, right? So because there might be a, some variety for data which doesn't have the cost as a key inside it. So you can keep that kind of a data also in the H2. If you want to retrieve it, it's a simple select query. Use uh, select column name from the table name. Now, next is the document store. Uh, as I told you, JSON is pretty much supported since version 9.2. Um, in version 9.2, when JSON was made, uh, it was a very bare minimum. It was kind of a validation around the data which is coming from the application. It validates the JSON document and stores in the database as a text. So um, some more information about the JSON. JSON is actually derived from the ECMA, a programming language standard. Now the ECMA is actually European Computer Manufacturer Association. They came up with the, uh, some special uh, script programming, programming language because they wanted to make a lightweight application where they can easily pass the data, you know, and they can easily uh, modify the data in the, into the application. So JSON actually derived from there. Um, and as you know that JSON is virtually supported in every programming language. Talk about Python. Python come, has its own module for JSON parsing, how you can use it. Talk about Perl. Uh, JavaScript language, they all support the JSON. Um, there are some other such uh, technology which is now available. Uh, one is called Node.js technology, which is very much lightweighted, uh, runs on the V8 engine, right, uh, which is actually made by the Google. Um, PLV8 is a one programming language supported uh, kind of extension available, which you can compile it. Uh, using the PLV8, you can write your function in JavaScript and you can keep into a database to process the data which is there. Uh, 9.3, and of course, as I mentioned, in 9.2, the JSON was a native data type. In 9.3, there are extra operators and functions added. Um, 9.4 is coming with a new data type called JSON B, which is kind of a canonical form or binary structure of the JSON data. Here is a very simple example of a JSON B. Uh, you can see how how easy it's, it's using it in PostSQL. You can create a one table with a one column with JSON B. You can keep the JSON document uh, as it is. You can, this is the one example uh, where you can see that it's a kind of a product example. You know, if you have a multiple products, right, and you want to keep as in a JSON document form, this is one example where the name of the product is called Apple phone, type of the product is phone, right? And for keeping that or putting that into a database, you have to simply execute insert command. So this is a very simple example. You can see it. 
the best part of this slide is that you can just copy and paste it will work. Another example of the JSON data, um, JSON also uh, it is a hierarchical structure as I told you right, uh, you can have a nested JSON also. So, in this example you can see names, uh, names is a kind of an array of a JSON document itself right, which has a type field and also the value, first name, last name, middle name, all those things. So, this is also one example of a JSON. Now, you have, you have seen how it is easy to store the data into a JSON, but how would you retrieve the data? How would you retrieve a sp uh, specific key out of that particular JSON document? So, PostgreSQL supports some special operators called get operator. So, here you can see there is a get operator this is called a get operator, where you are actually taking out the one particular key value. And using this, you can easily retrieve any keys or value, you know, you know, making a SQL, normal SQL command. But if your application is specifically looking for the JSON document, you can simply call the column name from table name. So, you can see it is very, very easy and simple. Any questions or not? So, if I would like to co combine the JSON and NC SQL, right, it is like a peanut butter and jelly for the DBS, because DBS knows very well about the select queries, right, they do not have to go and learn the new uh, language to, and new technology in which they want to store the unstructured data. So, JSON gives, is naturally integrated with the NC SQL. So, you have to, you have to, if you are familiar with the NC SQL, you can use and you can include the, uh, the get operator, any kind of operator which supports the JSON document into your select query and you can get it back. And with this, with JSON and SQL, actually you are not losing the asset property because you must be knowing that no SQL technology always uh, supports the event based uh, uh, transaction, right? It is not asset compliant properly because somehow you are lo losing one piece of the things as per the CAP theorem. Um, one is called the either you lose the consistency or either you lose the uh, integrity of a data, right? But uh, with, with the PostgreSQL, you, get the, you are getting the asset compliance plus the unstructured data you can keep into a database. Here is one more simple example. We are actually, you are joining, uh, you are trying to make uh, some meaningful information out of the structured data and unstructured data. Your unstructured data is a JSON data. Um, uh, so, data column is actually keeping the JSON structured data. And there is a one more table called uh, products. So, products is actually kind of a structured data, it has the column and data type. It is a normal table, right, a relational table which is there. So, if you want to do a joining between those two, you can easily do that in PostgreSQL. So, you are keeping the unstructured and structured both into your database and if you want to do some kind of a joining or if you want to make some meaningful information, take out a meaningful information from the unstructured, you can do that easily with the PostgreSQL. So, um, so joining, so the question is that how this joining is supported, uh, it is totally dependent on kind of type of uh, index which you are building it, right. Uh, if you do not have an index, of course, it will be a sequential scan. Um, the joining you can see how, how based. Like, there is a file JSON object in Excel, like right. it does not have to read like sequentially each object and find what is the meaning. Yeah, if you do not have the index, there are some indexes supported for the JSON also. So, if you use a JSON B, it is a pre passed, and if you make a one index on top of it, it is going to use that specific okay. index. Okay, so then you can index specific uh, like keys. Right. Okay. So, you can use that also. So, that is called gen index, which is supported and is coming in the 9.4. If it is even there, if it is not there at all, then in that case it will be a null value. But the, you, the, your application would not get any kind of a exception, like there will be no error messages, because that is a part of the variety of a data, because no SQL supports the variety of a data. When variety of a data may be your data have this particular key or may not be, right. If it does not exist, then it should return null, right. So, that is why. 
Kind of. I, I will, uh, in my next slides, I will show you when to use JSON and JSON B. So, what about array access? I, I made a mistake. So, if you want to access a specific array value within that JSON. Right. You can do that. There are specific operators which is supported here. And as you know, that array subscript starts with 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can use that. I mean, this get operator does support that accessing the array. Uh, with that, you can mention the subscript of the element of the array which you want to access it. Access it. Yeah. Can you uh, flatten the data object so it becomes columns? Yes, you can do that. There are some functions supported. Um, that is called JSON record populate, uh, JSON record set. JSON underscore record set where you can pass the JSON document. You can mention the which key uh, in which form you want to get it. You have to mention the key as a column and data type in which data type you want to get it. But you need to know the key. Yes, you need to know the key. Because the thing is this, when you talk about unstructured data, if you look at the unstructured data, it doesn't provide you some meaningful information. You have to make your mind what piece of the information you want to get it from the unstructured data, right, on which you want to do analysis. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's the same uh, 2 GB, I believe. Um, but again, this is a big uh, amount of, you can break your data also. You can put, uh, suppose if you want to keep huge amount of data, you can convert into the LOB and keep in a JSON document itself. So you can see that it's very simple. You don't have to uh, go through and learn the new programmatic language or logics to make things possible in PostgreSQL. So, in other terms, if I would like to say, uh, PostgreSQL provides a kind of a bridge between the SQL and JSON, right? So, if you already have a one structure data and your application requirement is that it can only work with the JSON document or JSON type of a data, then there are some functions available which you can use it. That function is called row to JSON. Row to JSON actually converts your structured data into JSON format, and your application can easily work with that. Because right now, Node.js is the one technology which I know very well, works uh, only with the JSON kind of a thing. It works very well with that, not only, very well with that, because it's very much integrated with the JSON. <clears throat> so we are talking about the JSON and everything, right? So what exactly JSON is, um, for, uh, and is there any standard defined for the JSON? Let's see that. JSON, as per the J, uh, JSON standard, this is called RFC, is a kind of a standard defined for the JSON. That is request for comment. JSON B is compliant with the RFC 7159, which is coming in the PostgreSQL 9.4. And as per this RFC, these are different data types of the JSON. One is called number. Number actually a uh, data type which can which supports the float value, real value, plus any numeric value or integer value. Everything can fit into the one particular data type called number. Second is called string. Uh, string is any, if you have a text value or if you have any, any Unicode value, anything, you can represent into this as a string in, uh, in the JSON, as a data, JSON data type. Um, Boolean, true and false value is also supported as a part of a JSON data type. Uh, there are some arrays uh, where array is also pretty much supported and, uh, is a part of a JSON data type. Objects. Objects is kind of a, of a nested JSON object, or you can say a JSON itself is a one object, right? So that kind of object is also part of the JSON data types. And null, if, if a particular key doesn't have any value, it's empty, it can be represented as a null. With this, there are some spe specific notes about this RFC, which, uh, which is pretty much there for the JSON. That is, JSON ignores any white spaces around between the syntactic elements. That is, if you have a key and value between that, that if you have multiple spaces, those spaces will be discarded, right? Uh, JSON recognizes only four white space characters, right? One is called tab, uh, single space, uh, new line, and carriage. So these are pretty much are the known, very known uh, JSON white space characters. Uh, 
uh, which is there in the JSON data types. Let us look at the very simple example of JSON, JSON data type. So, this is the one JSON document, right? And it contains all the data types which we discussed in the previous slides. One is called string type, you can see it is a kind of a string, a text, right? Uh, age is 25, 25 is a number, integer number, and it can be represented as a number type of the JSON RFC, as per the JSON RFC. If you have a real number, like so 167.7 is a float, floating value, it can be also fit into the number type. You can also represent array or object of array in the JSON data type. So, these are the, this is the one simple example which talks about whatever the data types defined for the JSON. Any questions? Okay. Now, in 9.4, we are going to get a good amount of operators and functions, which makes you, which make, which will make the developer's life easier to work with the JSON document within the database. Um, in 9.2, there is uh, some JSON build objects, JSON build array. So, if you have an array, right, you want to convert that into a JSON format, you can use the simple functions, which is available in the 9.4. If you want to build your own JSON type of object, you can just pass that key and value into the JSON build object function, and it will create that. Are those like JSON arrays that you create, or are those JSON? JSON. Okay, so let me string. Yeah. Okay. String, or if you are passing an integer or number, it will be number, number array. JSON number array. But it will come out as a string and it will schedule that from there. No, JSON. Because yeah, yeah. JSON is a data type. Okay, right. So, I mean, do you see a potential for the role of over and layers? Now that I mean, you can actually convert any application objects directly into JSON and store it. And the way JSON D is handling it in class and self minutes, you could potentially get away with over and layers. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> there, there will be some applications which must be talking about, um, talking in terms of the structured data, right? So, again, this is the form of the unstructured data. But the, uh, the, the, the ORM thing is more about the object relational model, where, where you actually work with the structured data. One structured data can have the another structure inside it, right? Yeah, you can you. Yeah, you can use that. That's true. But uh, well, yeah, you can use it. I mean, there is no doubt you can use it. You can use it. Uh, there is another function called JSON type of right. Suppose if you have unstructured data and you don't know the uh, type of the value, what kind of a data type is that value contains, right? Whether it's a number, whether it's a null, whether it's a string. So JSON type of can actually help you to find out the data type of that particular value. So, the JSON type of is a one more important um, function which is available because sometimes when application developers write the application, right, they, are, they don't know the data type of that particular key, right. So, they actually uh, explore this particular function to know the data type. Uh, JSON B is another data type which is coming in the 9.4. Um, it actually dissolves the white space and punctuations. Uh, in the uh, in the JSON document itself. So, if you have a key and value, in key value, if you have multiple spaces, right, those multiple spaces will be gone. But if the value is, if the space is a part of the value, right, that will be as it is in the JSON. Uh, only one value per object key is kept. So, if you have a one key, if you have used a duplicated, a duplicated key into a particular JSON document, like A has been used multiple times and it has a multiple values, right? So, last value will always be stored into the JSON-B. So, suppose if you have a document which has a repeatedly user one key called A, A has a two value, A has a three value in the same JSON document, the last value of A equals to two will be stored into the JSON-B. Um, there are some JSON-B equality and equality operator introduced in the 9.4, so that you can compare the two different JSON documents easily, whether it's greater than, less than, or is equal. Those kind of a thing is supported. Is those operators there in the 9.4? Uh, 
uh, there is a one index pretty much supporting the, supporting the JSON B that is called Gin Index. This Gin Index is very much smaller compared to the old versions, and it's very fast. You can easily extract the data, you know, fastly, and you can use in your application. With that, with JSON B, you can create indexes based on the sub documents. So, if you have a one JSON document as a sub document, you can create an index on that specific sub documents. So, this is a one example you can see on the slide where you're creating a one index on the authors. Authors can be multiple author. They have, they will have their first name and the last name. Those can be stored as a kind of an array of a JSON, right? So, it's a kind of a sub document on which you can create your own index to make the uh, to make access fast. Any questions? So let's talk about the BSON. How many of you have ever used the MongoDB? Nice, good. And you must be familiar with the BSON, right? <laughs> so BSON is actually a binary representation of a JSON. MongoDB uses this uh, binary representation behind the scene, and it's kind of a standard defined. But the JSON B is not exactly a BSON, because this kind of a question comes, right? JSON B, which is coming in the 9.4, is a binary representation of the JSON documentation. Is it, is it really a BSON? But it's not. There is a little bit of subtle difference between the BSON and JSON. That is the precision which is given by the JSON B. 64 bit, bit precision is not possible in the BSON, but it is possible in the JSON B. Now, question comes, some people must be thinking, why do we need a 60-bit precision, right? But you need it when you are just accumulating or aggregating a lot of data. So, because they are the one single precision matters a lot, right? So, that's why the JSON-B, yeah. Right. Do they store, does JSON-B store all numeric or all integers as 64-bit precision? Yes. Okay, so it's not like it's tied to the Yeah, there is no choice. You cannot control it. So, yeah, that was a kind of a limitation, the BSON, and I think uh, committee, I mean, people are working on it, how to get over with this um, limitation, but in JSON-B, you can keep it. I'll keep, give this, yeah. Um, on the BSON, that's a cool feature that it can represent date times as an object. Right. Or names of people, the drivers, in very programming language. Right. Does JSON-B offer no. any? It will be written as a string, but you can cast into the uh, date because uh, conversion, the whatever the value is written by the uh, JSON document in the PostSQL, you can cast into the timestamp, you can cast into the date or timestamp with time zone, everything you can do that. So you can ask, uh, ask that specific data type or in specific data type format from the database itself. So while extracting a data, you can type cast it to the timestamp, but while storing it, it will be stored as a text. Have I been able to answer your question? Any other questions? All right. Let's move on. So, we have learned about the JSON, JSON B, and H store. Now, the question comes when we have to use what, right? We have a three different options available, but we should know when to use what. So, H store is actually very well if you have a one flat data structure, right? In the sense, you don't have the nested data structures, or if you don't have the object as a part of the array, because S stores only supports the key value pairs. So you can use S store in that case. Um, if you ask me personally, I generally prefer JSON B over JSON, but you can use JSON if you have a need of keeping all the white spaces between the key and value, because as I mentioned, that JSON B actually dissolve those spaces, right, and um, if you want to keep the same order of the key and value pair in your JSON document, then you would like to use JSON. Because in JSON B, JSON B actually um, ordered those key value pair based on the length of the key and based on the bytes of the uh, particular keys. So it ordered in that format. So, but if you want to keep the same order of your JSON uh, document, you can use a JSON data type. Uh, if you were looking for the maximum input and output speed, that is, while you're inserting a data, it should be fast, right? Very fast. In that case, JSON will be a good option for you. But I will prefer JSON-B because it's a pre-pass format. 
when you're going to use a JSON, it's going to validate your JSON document, but it's going to store into a database as a text. It's not pre-passed. Okay, so if you want to pass that complete document, uh, then every time whenever trying to uh, fetch a particular key out of the JSON document is going to be pre-passed. So there will be an overhead of reading the data. But JSONB has a pre-pass format, right? And if you want to looking for a specific value of a key, you can use using the uh, get operator, which is pretty much supported in JSONB. <coughs> yes. Uh, JSONB is going to use a little bit more space than the JSON because JSON is a simple text representation in the, at the database disk side. But JSONB uh, is more like a brief pass format. It will try to uh, pass that into the number and you know numeric values. So it will keep some more information to it. Yeah, I mean, um, that's what, again totally depends. So let's talk about the one so JSON document. doesn't have the extra white space or anything at all, right? It's a simple following the same JSON standard defined by the RFC, that JSON document. That will be actually decomposed and stored into the, on the disk layer, right? Um, in that case, if you try to compare those two documents in JSON and JSONB format, JSONB will take a little bit more space, okay? But if you're talking about the extra white spaces which is there, right? In that case, JSONB will be taking less space because we'll dissolve those spaces. Okay, but it's a little bit. It's not huge difference. I mean, it's a very subtle, a very very minimum. Yeah, go ahead. What about H store? Um, you must have seen H store doesn't support. Um, the form of the JSON, right? Because JSON can have the objects and arrays, but H store is simply a key and value pair, right? So H store is also for the same standard. If your key and value pair has the extra spaces, right? Those will be dissolved and will be kept as it is in the binary format. But you cannot compare the spaces between them because those two are different data types or data model, you can say. All right. Any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> so here is a very simple example uh, using JSON B in the Node.js uh, application. This is a very simple example. You can just copy and paste it and run it. It will work just like that. Uh, you can see uh, the JSON, the table it has a one column called data, right? Which is of JSON B data type and which storing the JSON document like first name and the last name. And you can run a simple select query and the data which will be returned will be in JSON format. And you're using a JSON.parse to parse that particular data to extract the key value pair from the data which you got from the database. And you can use it. So you can see in the console log, right, it's, I'm just taking out the particular key and value that is first name and last name printing it. So this is a very simple example which shows you how you can create a one collection or object into a database using creatable command, how you can insert your sub uh, documents or JSON documents into the database using insert command, how you can retrieve it, and how you can pass it. Any question? Okay. Right? And of course, to use the Node.js, you would like to uh, install the POSIQL driver called PG. Yeah. yeah sorry, just to repeat this real quick. Uh, you, you're, is that the JSON statement? Uh, is that just dollar quoting, or is that actually mean something to the JSON? It's a kind of a tag, you know, insert statement. So if, if I mean, uh, that's the beauty of the uh, PostgreSQL. This is kind of a tag. Um, he's talking about. Just the dollar, uh, JSON, dollar. Yeah, dollar JSON and dollar. Anything between these two tags is kind of a data, which you're putting that into a database, a kind of a tag. It could be a single code, it could be double code, whatever, uh, you know, tag. Yeah, so you can use that. Yeah, 
No, no, no. It's just only I'm using a one tag, that's it. You know, you, you can replace the dollar JSON dollar with a single quote. So within bet between those two tags, so you can see, it's starting with the dollar JSON dollar. Huh. Can you see my pointer? Using quote and quote, so yeah. So suppose if you if you have a if you're going to use single quote, single quote is a part of your data, right? You would like to look for some other tag in which you can put your data. Yeah. So after going through the, as we know that in JSONB, everything is coming up. So we did some kind of a performance benchmarking uh, of the JSON and JSONB. Um, the main goal was that to help our customer to understand when to use uh, PostgreSQL over the NoSQL database. Uh, so for this, um, what we have done, we set up a two Amazon instances and we use MongoDB 2.6. So actually it was a three instance. One was a client, and there was a one MongoDB server, there was a one PostgreSQL server. PostgreSQL 9.4, okay? And there was a MongoDB, which is of uh, current version 2.6. And this test was completely focused on the how fast you can put your data into the database and how fast you can retrieve the data back. That was a complete focus on the, of this particular benchmark. And secondly, in this benchmark, we haven't tuned both the systems because from a developer perspective, what they want, they want to install the product and they want to start their development, right? So out of the box, without any tuning, how these two products will work. So we have done this kind of a performance evaluation. So this is one example. So in the tool, the tool which we have used it, that tool actually generated 50 million records. And that tool actually first loaded that data into the PostgreSQL and in the MongoDB parallelly. Okay? In PostgreSQL, we have used the copy command for bulk loading and Mongo import for bulk loading the Mongo database. After that, we have done multiple inserts, 50 million multiple inserts into the MongoDB and PostgreSQL. And then we calculated time to see how fast we are with the MongoDB comparison, which is like a NoSQL technology. Then after that, we did multiple select statement also to find out how fast you can get the unstructured data, the JSON, JSON data, which is stored into a PostgreSQL. And there were some interesting results. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was single inserts coming up, auto commit. Yes. Uh, yes, a log table. It's not unlogged. It's standard table. Not unlogged. So there were some interesting results. So let, let's look at the interesting results. These are the results, which clearly shows that PostgreSQL has a capability to manage this unstructured data, and it can outperform with the MongoDB or NoSQL technology. We are still working on comparing the PostgreSQL JSONB or the uh, uh, comparison with the other technology like Hadoop and uh, Couchbase, but we will be doing that later phase but the tool which we have used for this purpose is already available for you. You can download and try it yourself to see how PostgreSQL can perform. So in this result, you can see that PostgreSQL is pretty much faster in loading your data, right? It's so like in MongoDB, it has taken like 276% more than loading a data into PostgreSQL. In the same way for inserts, same amount of inserts which we were doing in the PostgreSQL and MongoDB, MongoDB took like 295% more than the PostgreSQL. And disk space-wise, we are consuming less space compared to the MongoDB. Right? Retrieving the data is pretty much faster. You can see that MongoDB is 465% slower than the PostgreSQL. So we're pretty much optimizing that term. Is JSON or JSONB? JSONB. Without any Postgres. It's a single-node MongoDB, single MongoDB, single MongoDB, single node PostgreSQL. Uh, can you compare the document number of keys? Yeah. Uh, the the size, size of the each document was uh, 4K. You can see that uh, here. The previously, actually, I tried to use the bigger size of the document. But MongoDB console has a limitation that it can only ingest the 4K. So that's why I limited to the 4K itself. Uh, 
Uh, in JSON B, yeah, we have the gin index. In MongoDB, it has its own indexes. Plus the key which on which we were doing the searching, we created the one secondary index in MongoDB too. Yeah. It, it was a default, yeah, save rights. It was actually default. We haven't uh, tuned that one either. I don't think so. Did you compare unindexed performance? No. But you can do that. The tool is available. Uh, I'll show you that. Here it is. So the performance evaluation. Actually, uh, one of the person, Alvaro, I think he's not here. Uh, he was in yesterday's uh, training session. He actually pointed out, point, pointed out that uh, limitation of the MongoDB. That is, MongoDB console can only take less than 4K. If your J JSON document is more than 4K, it will truncate that. Right? So he pointed out that. So we fixed that, and we did the benchmarking once again. And we have seen we are still better. So for the performance evaluation, there is a next step. We actually uh, pub we have published this particular tool on the Enterprise DB GitHub. It's publicly available. Any anyone can download this, right? They can create their own instances. They can run this benchmark anytime. And if you have any kind of a feedback, you can send it to us. Or you, there is also a kind of a forum which we have defined for this uh, PG NoSQL benchmark. So it's available for you. Download it, use it, uh, compare yourself, and see how PostgreSQL can do much better than the MongoDB. Now let's come to the structured and unstructured data. So <clears throat> I would say it's always say not only SQL. Because as you know that uh, when application developer works on making some application, they starts with the uh, one specific structure. And that st uh, structure actually gets move on with adding some more value into it. Because as the requirement changes, you do a lot of more modification into your, into your, into your application. right? So again, if you are working on the unstructured data, sooner or later as your business grow, right, you would like to apply some kind of business rules on those data. In unstructured data, you cannot do that. You cannot define some kind of a constraint on top of it. right? But if you have to uh, segregate, if you want to take out some meaningful information, when I say meaningful, you make up your mind what piece of the information you want to take out from the unstructured data, right? So when you make your mind, then you are automatically making kind of a structure around the unstructured, the piece of information you want to analyze it, right? So you can easily do that kind of a thing in the PostgreSQL. You can make a kind of a structured data out of the unstructured in the, in the JSON format. There are some functions are available in PostgreSQL 9.4, which you can use it. With this, you're not only getting the structure and structure uh, performance in the PostgreSQL, you're not losing the asset compliance, right? You have all the things in PostgreSQL database itself. So PostgreSQL is all giving you an ultimate flexibility. That is, you can work with the structured data, you can work with the unstructured data, you can install your PostgreSQL in the cloud, and later on, your business grows, right? And you want to keep that your your specific data into your premises. You can move between from from cloud to the premises. So, it's giving you ultimate flexibility. Always say yes to the not only SQL. <coughs> and Postgres has given you all the pieces and information which you need it, right? Which a one application developer needed for their web development. So you can use JSON, you can use Edge Store, or uh, and you can use normal structure also, relational structure in a one database. So you can move between those two. So if your application requirement is to work only with the JSON type of a data, so if you have one table, you can easily use a one function called uh, to JSON to convert your row to JSON uh, to convert the structured data into a JSON format in the database itself. And the best thing is that you can also define some kind of a constraint in the JSON document itself. You can put a, some kind of a check constraint. You can create, use those get functions before doing that, uh, before inserting the data, you can do those kind of validation. There are some useful resources. 
we will be uh, giving us some kind of a, a no sequel kind of a no sequel training in pg europe uh, madrid uh, we have a uh, enterprise db has already published some um, <clears throat> white papers around the no sequel which you can see here and you can go and download this uh, benchmark tool is already available you can download that you can do your benchmarking yourself and see the post sequel performance over other no sequel any questions Indexing was added before loading a data. No. Uh, 9.3 or 9.4? 9.4. We have used 9.4, PostSQL 9.4, MongoDB 2.6. We use the JSON B data type and with a GIN index. You, you could create functional indexes in yes. 9.3, but it was, you know, functional indexes you have to test to. Right. Performance characteristics haven't done any benchmark, but um, if you're going to use a JSON B, right, and you're going to access the large key, you will get a, uh, of course. I mean, if, it's, if a JSON B value is large, is it going to do like a linear scan within it, or is there No, it totally depends uh, the indexes you have defined it. If you're going to use a gen index, gen index actually keeps the path of each keys, okay? If it is sub document also, it will keep the path of those. So accessing, retrieving those data will be faster. But if so, we have like a single value that's a document, and we have, you know, let's say, 100,000 keys, uh, is it going to take a long time to find a particular key? Is it going to scan over them, or is there some kind of hashing? Uh, there will be some kind of hashing, depending on the, uh, if you're using gen index, there will be some kind of hashing to jump in which node it has to go. Uh, if it is a value, then it's going to be a sequence scan. It's going to scan each and every key to compare it first to get the data. So that's why the JSON B. That's why I prefer to use JSON B over JSON, because JSON B decomposes it and it provides you the capability of creating an index on top of it. But it's a good question, actually. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Any questions? You can reach out to me. I'll be here all day. You know, we'll be attending some more uh, seminars or sessions. Yeah, I, you know, I came in late to, to this presentation. Where uh, we'll be publishing this on SlideShare, and we'll be sharing the link with everyone. Yeah, and we'll be sharing. There will be PG Open Wiki page also from where you can download it. All right, thank you.